Growing up, I didn't have a very religious family per se. I mean, more so than some, I'm sure, but throughout my adolescence, I went through some sexual abuse and that resulted in a snowball effect. Um, I tried to kill myself, I mutilated myself, I finally turned to drugs, I lost a good decade um, to all of that. Went from coast to coast trying to run away from myself. I'd go to California and then come back here and eventually you realize you're running from yourself. Um, I always believed in God. That was never an issue, but I never relinquished control. I was never able to surrender. Um, and then I met Sean, and we had an interesting relationship. Um, we were blessed with a daughter, but things got pretty difficult there as well. Um, we were both drug addicts, and we started to take stuff out on one another, and then it turned into more of a psychological warfare. Um, finally, when Emily was about nine months old, I left him. Um, we moved back to my mother's house, and I ended up getting a restraining order against him. Um, it was really tough on both of us, but I was so scared that Emily would see how broken we were. I guess that became my primary concern, was protecting her more so than myself. I didn't think that I deserved God's love. I didn't think that his love was unconditional. I thought it was something that you had to earn. And it wasn't until later on that I realized how truly profound his impact can be on our lives. Um, Emily and I had moved into our new house. We had been there a couple months. I was extremely overwhelmed as a single mom. Um, I had just started nursing school. And I remember after putting her to bed, I literally collapsed on my bedroom floor, just crying, just begging Jesus to make it all better. And that was the first time, I think, in my entire life that I surrendered to him. And that was when everything started to change um, for the better. Once I had a relationship with God, everything else started to follow um, to the point where I went to court. We dropped the restraining order just so that we were able to attend church together. We started going to counseling, a lot of counseling, and we were fortunate enough to reconcile. Now we parent Emily together, and then about three months ago, I suppose, uh, Sean proposed to me, and we're gonna, <laughs> we'll be getting married um, in a couple weeks now. So I grew up with a similar story, just of um, being separated from God, but thinking I knew God. Um, I grew up with my mother. She was a single, single parent in Newark, New Jersey. Um, my dad left when I was two. She was abusive. She was an alcoholic and an addict. And, um, you know, she was under a lot of the same struggles and stresses that, that we encountered over our years, where she was just alone, overwhelmed. She didn't know the love of Christ. And um, she took it out on me a lot. And I lived in that area until I was about 15, basically in and out of mental hospitals, trying to commit suicide. And I uh, just had a lot of a lot of different problems. And they ended up sending me to a uh, mental health facility in Doylestown, Delval Mental Health, when I was 15. And um, I ended up running away from that place. And um, I started to meet women and different people that would take me in as a homeless child. And um, I started doing drugs, started experimenting with the same things that I hated, that my mother did. And um, I ended up using uh, fentanyl, heroin, and relationships to try and fill that void that's inside of my heart. Um, just looking for anything to fill it and feel whole, and nothing worked. Um, I also tried suicide. I've, I've died twice from overdoses. I was in a coma. Um, relationships to fill the void, cutting myself, 
um, basically anything I could to just try to to not think about that life and all that pain and that overwhelming anxiety. And um, I met Lauren, we ended up having our daughter together. And, you know, I was just, I found that family I always wanted and I just controlled it with everything in me to keep it. And um, I was on testosterone at the time, I was still on methadone um, and I was just, I was psychologically abusive to get what I wanted to feel like I was a man and that I was loved. And I had no idea how to be the leader of a family, let alone how to fix myself or anything. Um, I put Lauren through hell and uh, she ended up praying for us before she left, about two weeks before. Um, and I didn't find this out till recently. But when she left and got the restraining order, I had all these people coming out of the woodwork, like my neighbors, my neighbor Rhonda, um, my other friends, and they would say, trust in God, you're a good man, and uh, keep it in prayer, don't give up. And it just kept happening, like all these people talking about God, talking about Jesus, talking about prayer, saying I'm a good man, which was ridiculous. I was a self-righteous man at that. I ended up meeting up with my friend John, who I barely knew. I was just trying to talk to him so that I could find out what she was doing because she had a restraining order and we couldn't talk. And um, he ended up taking me to a picnic and it was a Christian picnic. And uh, there was a bunch of people that just prayed around me. I thought it was very weird. Uh, I felt very awkward with them touching me, but um, it did something to my spirit. And um, I came to church with them that Sunday but um, I had a spiritual experience the next time I came to church and I sat up front and uh, I just kept coming and then um, I ended up receiving a phone call from filling out one of the cards and it was Jana and she spoke with me and told me how to pray and give it up to Jesus. Um, when I got off the phone with her, I basically dropped down to my knees sobbing. I was crying so hard that my nose bled. I've never had that happen in my life. And I was just going through all the pain of my past and how I projected that onto everyone in my life, onto Lauren. And um, it, it was really hard to go through. It was like looking in a mirror, but I had grace to do it. And I just saying, kept saying, Jesus, please take this. And um, at the end, I just, I remember that last trembling, you know when, you're, when your chin just trembles? Well, I let out a sigh at the end and my chin was um, just trembling and uh, I just felt all the weight of that, those memories leave me. When we were at court, um, I would go in and, and try to speak from my heart and my lawyer wouldn't let me, so I fired my lawyer and I was taking that on complete faith. And, um, I basically just said, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to love you while we were together, but I'm gonna try to show you love now through this process. And, um, and it didn't get the result I wanted, but it was right and I did it. And um, I still had to do supervised visits with my daughter in a library for months. And yet the next mediator hearing, God put it on my heart and I did that same thing again. I had people like Nick, do my first supervised visit with my daughter, got involved in small groups, they just rallied around me. And here I found out that Jesus was doing work on her separately while we couldn't even speak. We didn't even have a clue what each other were doing. So um, that prayer that she did before she left was, was a powerful prayer because I never knew that she did that and I wondered why all these weirdos were contacting me about Jesus all the time. And that explained it. And. Um, now I'm pretty much that guy. I do that for other people. Well, like you said, it's not like our lives changed instantaneously. I mean, we have the same struggles all the time. It's just now we have a faith that is yeah. the backbone. Yeah, we were both searching to be whole and fill our hearts with love and relationships. And now Jesus is, has made us both whole and we come together. And we can actually be one and face our issues without attacking one another. Absolutely. It's, it's been a blessing.